Hello and welcome to Pecantation Points Video Snark. I'm currently reading through The Betrothed by Kira Cast. This is not the first video of this book, so I recommend that you watch the other videos before you start this. Links are posted below. Chapter 33 Hollis now has the knowledge that her parents have been at the estate when the attack happened, and they're dead now too. Lady Aesop tries to tell the servants to help them, but they push back with some casual racism. However, Lady Aesop is quick with some cold truths. That Lord and Lady Bright are dead, and that Hollis is in charge now. That spurs everybody into action. As Hollis watches Scarlet and Lady Aesop, Hollis realizes that Lady Aesop has been a pillar of strength. She told Hollis to stay put during the attack, carried both her girls across to the other manor, and now is trying to help them get back after the senseless tragedy. But there is one question in Hollis's mind. Why? Why did this happen? Lady Aesop begins by taking Hollis back to the day when the Aesop family first came before Jameson. She was so certain that Jameson would punish the family simply for existing, that they would either be imprisoned or made to leave. Instead, he let them save the palace for a while before granting them permission to settle in an estate of their own. Lady Aesop then delves into some of the isolate family royal tree. Long story short, the Quinton might have descended from some king, but the Aesop family are distantly related to him from some sister or something way back when. After a while, Lady Aesop breaks off into tears. She says that if she had known that something like this was possible, she would have tried to, harder to push Hollis away. But we're still circling back to the why, and the fact that Quinton sees his distant cousins who literally fled to another country as political rivals is sure part of it, but surely not all of it. Lady Aesop goes on to say that before the family left Isolate, they'd gone to celebrate Quentin's 25th year on the throne, even though nobody really wanted anything to do with him. When the family got back, they found all the animals killed and all the servants either having been murdered or kidnapped into slavery. A few had apparently hidden or something and were able to report all of what had happened. And the worst part is that the Aesops wouldn't even be next in line anyway. That falls to the Northcots, the family who'd been mentioned during the royal visit. But then Hollis points out a huge flaw in Quentin's plan. This is a man whose only heir is about five seconds from death. He has no other heirs and Valentina keeps miscarrying. He also keeps murdering all of his distant family. So when Quentin's reign eventually ends, as it must sooner or later, then there will be no more from this line to take the throne. It's likely that some third party will come in and who knows what might happen. Although, between you and me, I'd rather take my chances with the third party if this is the current regime. Lady Aesop breaks up again and says that she has lost absolutely everything now. No money, no home, no family. Paula looks at the two rings on her fingers, the one Lady Aesop had given her in the wedding band from Silas. She says that Lady Aesop has her, never mentioned, is Scarlet. Hollis goes on to say that while her parents didn't approve of her, she was still their only child, ergo the manor is hers, and she's going to take care of Lady Aesop and Scarlet, but forget about her, I guess. Chapter 34 Hollis wakes up the next morning, having forgotten for two seconds the senseless tragedy of her wedding day. Then she remembers, especially because she's on the floor. After pushing my dresser up against the door, I get that you feel the need to do something following an event like that, but those guys set fire to the other manor. If they can't get through the door, then they'll d probably just set fire to it. So honestly, pushing the dresser up against the door was probably the stupidest thing they could have done. Hollis thinks about the last thing Silas had said to her. She joked that he was going to spoil her and he'd be played good. Lady Aesop then tells Hollis that she and Scarlet should leave, that Hollis should get on with her life, but when Hollis gets upset over this, she quickly reassures Hollis that this is to protect her. She also tells Hollis that while the wound of Silas's death might be exceptionally painful right now, Hollis is young. She tells Hollis to find somebody else to get married and to have lots of babies. Hollis asks where the two of them will go. Lady Aesop says that they'll go back to Isolate. Hollis naturally thinks her mad, but Lady Aesop seems to think that them being women will help them to not be murdered. She goes on to say that the Northcrats have cut themselves off from the line, while still being in Quentin's inner circle. However, she and her husband raised their children to know where they came from and why they should be afraid of Quentin. And in the end, Lady Aesop feels like this is her only option left. 
especially if she wants Quentin to leave Hollis alone. She must go back to Quentin and prostrate herself for the slim chance of leniency. Lady Aesop reminds Hollis that she loves her, and that she'll write to Hollis a lot. They have a tearful hug before Lady Aesop proposes that they should go over to the manor to see what they can save. Thanks for listening to my book snuff on YouTube. New videos are up every Monday. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss anything. Also, while you're waiting for the new video next week, be sure to catch up on my other video series. If you're already caught up with that, then you can head over to Tumblr for my main book snarks, always free and updated daily. People who support me on Patreon also have early access to my daily snark, but also bonus snark that isn't up anywhere else. People who donate to me either by supporting me on Patreon or by making a one-time donation via PayPal or Coffee also get shoutouts in my videos. Thank you so much to Dawn, Phoebe, and Nikki for supporting me already. Be sure to join my Patreon or donate to hear your name next week. Also, if you want to read some of the stuff that I published, you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have 19 erotic short stories, one short story collection, and one full-length novel. Links for everything are posted below. See you next week, guys. While still somehow, while still being in.